Good morning, friends, wherever you are, and welcome to today's cichlids and whatever your favorite drink is, but cichlids and coffee is the actual name. Oh, yeah. Okay. So welcome, everybody. So happy that you're here. I'm so happy I'm here after uh, last night's 1 a.m. tornado warning, which, uh, thank goodness, didn't touch down even though we had some um, very, very high winds. And looking at the chat, it looks like a lot of you had uh, some pretty, pretty intense weather. So uh, thank goodness we're all okay. Looks like Mississippi might have gotten hit by something, and I haven't gotten the details on that, but crazy times. Hey, Denny. Dennis Riddell in the house. Hello to you and to Mary. And uh, Fish Ranch. Hello, Fish Ranch. Y'all. <laughs> I love that, y'all. Hey, Angelo. Good morning, Ben, and everyone else. Hey, I'm glad you're here. And Midwest Aquatics in the house. Let's see here. Peas and Haps. Hey, Peas and Haps. Glad you're here, my friend. Midwest Aquatics. Let me see. I'm cycling through, Angelo. Michael. Hey, Michael. Glad you're here, my friend. GP in the house. Hello, GP. And Davey Larson. Hey, Davey. Cichlid Kings. Part of my wonderful moderator crew, Dennis Riddell and uh, GP. Cichlid Kings. Let's see. ex Kali Kev. It is a beautiful day in Tennessee. Actually, uh, we have a um, about 16 mile per hour winds, but... It's very nice out, and you're going to see in today's uh, short uh, lap of the fish room, I actually film a little bit outside just for a second. You'll see it's, uh, we live, we definitely live in a beautiful part of the world. And let's see here, Marcus D. C. D. McClung. Hello, Marcus. Love that name, ex Collie Whips World. Hey, glad to see you, Whips World. Hey, Salient. Salient Aquatics in the house. Vinoski Fishkoto. Vinoski Fishkoto. What a great name. And uh, hello to you too, my friend. Jeff Hester is here and ZZip. All right, we got a great crowd here. Dustin Robley. He finished his cup of coffee. Well, you got to go get another one, my friend. Once never enough. Gaza Ga Gaza Gamer, eighteen seventy six. Wow, great name, Doug Bugera. Hello, Doug, and uh, Win Winard Walmerans. Hey, Winard, Winand, Winand. I hope I pronounced that right. Got today an a Oscar pair that came with a four feet tank. Wow, how much you pay for that? And how big are those Oscars? Very very cool. Hey, Paul. Paul Newman's here, so is Warren Venter. Glad you could catch the live, Warren. Chris, Chris's Aqua Zone. Howdy to you. All right. Well, I'm not going to get to all of you because there's a lot of you, but welcome to everybody. You, uh, it's so, uh, I'm so happy that you're choosing to spend a little bit of your Saturday with me. I have a few things for you. Uh, of course, a short video that I'll be sharing with you. And I also uh, will be answering some of your questions live. And, of course, today's topic, uh, how I've had to uh, re rewire my brain a little bit to, uh, to start being uh, relatively effective with, uh, with a planted community tank, which is similar in some basic ways to a... Um, an African cichlid tank, but very, very different in some other ways. And you'll see what I mean once I, once I get into it. So uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and uh, do the formal start of this. Uh, let's go. All right, that makes it official. And uh, a big shout out to my uh, Patreon supporters, the members of the Garage Gang who helped to make all of this possible with their monthly support. 
A big thank you to all of you who show up, who comment, who rate, who subscribe, who hit that bell. And uh, your support is also greatly appreciated. Uh, details on becoming a Patreon supporter, a member of the Garage Gang, are located under the video. And I appreciate all of you who have done that. And um, also a big shout out to... Rock out here. <laughs> Big shout out to uh, James and my friends over at the Cichlid Shack for helping to uh, sponsor this channel. Uh, all the fish you see in the tank behind me are our Cichlid Shack fish. So uh, just keep that in mind. And uh, if you want to pick up some, he just got an, an order in 30 boxes. I saw a picture of it on Instagram. He just got an order in it, and uh, so he's really loaded right now with uh, cichlids and probably other kinds of fish as well. So go ahead and uh, reach out if you're looking for a particular fish, and be sure to use the 15% off Shack Attack 15 for orders over $100. Does not apply to shipping. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let's see here. Where do I, where do I start? I'm going to be doing a review on uh, what came in the mail. This is, uh, is one, of my favorite, one of my favorite fish room items. And this one is from the, uh, my friends over at the Aquarium Co-op. Uh, Corey and Zenzo and the whole crew over there. And you can see it. A single outlet. Um, pump. Now, what's wh what makes this uh, pump special? And you're seeing the first unboxing. I've never opened it before, but here we go. I will be doing a full review on it. It's got a digital readout, a simple uh, on-off switch, and an up and down for the amount of air uh, pressure that you'd like. And it has a clip if you want to uh, attach it to something that you can clip it on, like the outside of a tub or something. And uh, what this is, is a, a lithium power. I mean, you can have it plugged in. They give you a nice long cord, like you get a USB cord. You can even have it plugged into anything that has a USB outlet, including your car. But uh, you, can, you can take this with you on trips if you're transporting fish. Uh, if you have fish in a bucket. Uh, but what I like about it is that in the event of a power outage, it is a lithium battery that will continue to run for many, many hours. And um, this is very important because, as you know, it's my opinion that what kills fish in a power outage is a lack of oxygen because the water just becomes real still, no... Uh, no, no uh, bad gas can leave, and, and uh, no oxygen can get in. And as a result, your fish more or less suffocate. So if you can have something that continues to agitate the surface, something like this, then there's a much higher chance that your fish are going to survive. They also sent me some air stones. Air stones with little uh, filters on them, as well as 10 feet of airline. I really like the Aquarium Co-op airline. It's, uh, it doesn't get stiff and hard, but it's very easy to work with. And, uh, you know, you just cut the length that you need. So uh, watch for a review on that. And uh, I'll include the, underneath this video probably a link to some of those products if you're interested. Now, I'm going to share with you a hack. And uh, just a little hack I came up with. And, and if, you, if you've used uh, the, the Expertmatic internal filters, the older um, white model that uses more, it has more wattage, 
uh, but uh, the newer one is more efficient. The black one's more efficient. The new ones don't have the middle section, the chamber in the middle of the sponges. And that chamber, you would slip this inside that chamber. And you could fill it with charcoal. In my case, I'll just leave it uh, empty. But you could put activated carbon in it, rather, and, and, uh, and, and uh, anything you want, really. You could put uh, media. You could put matrix in it, whatever you want. But I had a, a couple extra filters laying around, and I wanted to do some, a little bit of um, cleanup. In, the, in my 20 gallon tall, which has very teeny fry. And for anyone who's ever done uh, vacuuming in an aquarium with fry, uh, you know what you're worried about. I mean, they are so fast, they're so camouflaged, they're in and out so quick that next thing you know, they're, they're traveling down the tube and heading for the sink and there's nothing you can do about it. They've gotta be real careful, but if you have one of these, what you do is you take it, you take the hose, and you just put this on. And if you want to, you can attach it with something if you want, but I didn't find it necessary. I found that the suction of the hose would hold it in place. And now you've got, you're actually siphoning through a very tight grill, and the little peewee fry can't get in there. They can't get in it. And uh, that little hack has saved the life of quite a few of my fry, especially the dark, the dark ones, which blend in really nice with the substrate. And, you know, when they're just born, they're just like a little, like a period at the end of a sentence moving around. And uh, you really don't, 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 uh, you really can't even see them. So um, can I get a quick AV check? How's the audio visual? Now, so one of you said something already. I did catch it. Let me see. Let me know how the audio and visual is looking. Hey, Jerry. Jerry's in the house. Good to see you, my friend. Hope all is well. Looking forward to seeing you in November. Hey, Art Baglio. Jerry Martin, AV, A, 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 V, good. <laughs> it looks like your, your finger got stuck on the key there. <laughs> okay, AV is good. Thank you, my friends. I appreciate that. You never know until you know. So um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and uh, start off with a, with a short video that's going to be made public later. But you folks, uh, of course, being part of the special inner circle. You're going to get to see this first. And uh, it was just something I, I, I kind of whipped out so it doesn't have like perfect lighting and uh, it's not like a, a, a real production. Just a real simple uh, walkthrough. And uh, let's go ahead and just take a look at that real quick. And then we'll come back and talk about today's topics and answer your questions. Hello friends and welcome to this week's lap of the fish room. I've decided to go ahead and film it as opposed to doing a live, uh, a live lap during the live stream since uh, that required a bit of editing afterwards so I could release it. So I'm going to go ahead and just make this a video that will be available both in the live stream and then I can release it later as a separate video. So at any rate, let's go ahead and take a look at what's been going on here in the fish room. Uh, there have been a few changes, and uh, let's go ahead and, and, and jump right into it. Sometimes I like to leave the door open so we can air out the fish room. This is the view out the back door of the fish room. As you can see, it's a beautiful Tennessee neighborhood. A little overcast and windy today. It's funny, it was beautiful in about 75, 80 degrees yesterday, and here we are again today with overcast conditions. But let's go ahead and start with uh, the beta tank. The loaches in this tank are doing really, really well. They're just playing all the time. Where Before when I had one, he was just hiding all the time. Now that I've put two in here, 
just out and about and playing and moving around and being very, very active. You can see the little, uh, there's a little pleco down there on top of that almond leaf. And that almond leaf is disintegrating, so I'll probably have to replace it. A lot of the stuff that gets kicked up in the substrate when I clean is just disintegrated almond leaf. I feed these guys a very limited amount of food. And I'll show you. Let's go ahead and just push this back. As soon as I do that, they know it's time to eat. Now, if you're wondering where my red velvet betta is, he actually went and died on me. I picked up this little Dumbo. It's a cute little Dumbo betta. And I'm not going to buy big bettas anymore. I'm going to buy s smaller bettas that are younger. So you really can't tell how old they are when you get them. So I'm going to buy smaller bettas and hope that they're able to give me a little bit longer lifespan. But here's some of the things that I that I feed them. I feed them the uh, bug bites. I also have some Sarah, some of this Sarah color. They call it color food, but it's called Betagran. And I also uh, have some of this North Fin. Better bits. So let's give them a little bit of. Um, let me see what's easy to open with one hand. We'll give them some bug bites this morning. And I feed them. I feed them just once a day. And they get really just a teeny. They get a teeny pinch of food. And I'll show you. About a nickel size, about a nickel size of food. Not even the not even the, the the full small pinch, and that's what they get for the whole day. And then I'll also drop uh, an algae wafer in there, and sometimes some shrimp pellets, things of this nature, for the uh, loaches and for the uh, plecos. This tank is empty, and it's just unavailable. Uh, as a hospital. It's available as a hospital or a quarantine tank if I pick up some fish. This tank here I went ahead and cut back all of the Sprite and I cleaned it up and trimmed it. This is the 20 gallon tall from from glass cages as you can see the label. And what I did is I is I, I was gonna move a lot of the Sprite out and put it like in the beta and in the 55 uh, community tank but I decided you know what I'm just gonna leave it here and have it be just a place where these little babies can hide. I mean, because I'm getting so many babies, and I imagine a lot of them over time have been eaten. But if I create this this big mound here, it's a great, like a perfect hiding spot for fry. And there's always at least one, usually two females about to burst in this tank. What am I going to do with, with all the little fish? I don't know, maybe take them to the local fish store. Someone suggested I feed them to the cichlids. We'll see, time will tell. But I want to give them a chance by having a place they can go ahead and hide. The uh, other 29 gallon with a couple, a couple plecos and some of these snails, some pagoda snails. That tank is also just waiting as a holding tank. This heater, by the way, when it gets really cold, does a great job. This is a uh, doctor heater, it's called. And it comes with a remote control. I'll keep it at 68 unless it gets freezing, freezing outside. And then I'll switch it to the 70s. 
like 72 and it does a great job. All right, let's look at the 90 gallon. 90 gallon is doing great. It's, it's ready for a cleaning. You can see how it's growing algae along the bottom here, if you can see that. A little bit of algae. I might throw a pleco in this tank. A little bit of algae near the top here and a little bit on the plants. I can touch those plants up by hand and uh, I'll probably just do a little, a little touch up there along the bottom edge. The uh, geos are always uncovering the base, digging stuff around, but I'm not complaining because they do a real good job of keeping the substrate nice and clean. But sometimes they create cave-ins, things will fall over because they'll, they'll, they'll uh, move all of the base you know, whatever's under something. So if you have anything tall, if you have something tall, be careful because they'll eat away the, they'll move the bottom and then it'll fall over. But these fish are doing well. A little more light. There we go. That's an AC Hecali. Once classified as a geo, but it's not classified as a geo anymore. Little silver dollars. There's that big old beautiful uh, electric blue Acara. I love the markings on the face of the. Uh, Red spotted gold severum. He's almost too bright for the camera. I have to adjust the light settings. But he's trying to get these uh, like these etchings along the face and forehead. And of course his body markings are beautiful. But this tank will get a, a little uh, touch up and then I'll flip the lid on it maybe take a look at the filters. I'll test the tanks before I do a water change. Uh, if my nitrates are in the right, I might just not mess with it. Maybe do a water change next week. Here's the planted tank. And if you look closely, you'll notice there's some new plants here along the edge. These tall, lighter green ones are brand new. And there's, a, um, there's an Anubius and a Java fern right there in the front part of the wood. And I'm still, uh, working hard to keep the uh, the bearded, the black algae from spreading. Some plants seem to be more resistant to it than others. Not sure if the uh, phosphate pads that I added are making a difference. The Buenos Aires Tetras are uh, munching a little bit on the plants, but, but not really on, on, uh, on all of them, really just these, these small swords that they kind of munch on and then the swords sort of erupt and start growing again. So that's fine. If they want to munch on the swords, that's okay. The Buenos Aires Tetras, the ones with the pink tails, the red tails, very active fish, as opposed to like the lemons who are pretty mellow, Serpos are pretty mellow. All the neons are doing great. There's 10 of them in there. First batch of neons I've had that have really lasted, been a little more rugged. One little lone ember in here. You can make them out there. Little ember tetra. Some quarries. A nice group of uh, rummy nose. Love the look of rummy nose with that, those black stripes on the tail. A couple cherry barbs, there's three cherry barbs. Two that I bought originally and one that was born in the tank. There's a group of five. There's boras. They tend to mostly school together unless they're being startled. It's a really big pagoda snail. This is the the mother of all the Buyota snails. Looks like looks like she's on the move. There's 
one of the little plecos on the wood. And stuck underneath the wood there is the uh, whip tail catfish. He loves to blend in with things that he just sort of looks like a piece of wood himself. This tank is also at this point a, uh, a bit of a holding tank. And it has the, uh, the Taiwan Reef, who went blind on me. Don't know uh, what's going on. His body did have some marks on it, so he may have been, he may have been harassed by another fish, but he was in that little five gallon. I moved him over here to the 55 so he has more room to swim around. And I'll drop food in the tank and he'll just kind of go around and, and, and mess around with the substrate until he finds it. If I do get more fish in, I'll probably uh, use a divider in this tank. And I've, I've got one of those uh, Life with Pets 55 gallon di divider. So I'd split this tank up and then use it as a uh, as a quarantine as a quarantine tank. So that way he he could just stay in a little bit more room, and then when the other fish come out of quarantine, I'll go ahead and remove the divider so he has more room to hang out. There are a couple plecos in this tank. Here's the 210. All the beasts in the 210 are doing great. Wondering what I'm doing. Jack Dempsey, she's doing great. Oscars continue to be pals, that's a good, a good thing. And that vieja is just a beast. Okay, let's see if we can see a face off. Here comes the uh, fire mouth. The Nicaragua interested in playing, let's see. No, just interested in looking at me in case there's going to be some food. Salvini is hanging around her cave, not sure what's going on. I love the vari variation in color in the body of a uh, chocolate cichlid. Of course, I love the markings on this red tiger Oscar. Can you show them to me? Green Terror is doing great. Nobody's messing with them. Hey, look who came out of her cave. This giant piece of uh, wood that I harvested locally continues to float. Will probably float for the next 20 years. Really pretty piece of wood. Really glad I got it. Had to cut it because it wouldn't fit otherwise. Go over here to the 300. Everybody in here is doing great, waiting to be fed. I'm gonna be adding a brand new rock that I just purchased. If you saw that video where I went to the fish store, I picked up a beautiful black and white zebra rock. So I'll probably, looking at the rocks here, I'll probably turn them because they do have a little bit of brown on them. So I'll go ahead and turn them, put the clean side up. This Pucachromis uh, Rhodesia yellow is just really popping. So I'll turn, turn the rocks and figure out what spot I want to put that, that black and white rock. Maybe I'll remove this one because it is the least amount of gray. Remove that rock and put the black the black and white one more towards the middle. Kind of a showpiece rock. Very, very pretty. This plant looks good, doesn't need any cleanup. This tank doesn't really s seem to get much algae at all. It gets a little bit of mulm on the glass, but really no, no algae. You can see how much water movement occurs in this tank. That creates a tremendous amount of oxygen. 
So between the two outputs of the uh, Shisei 5.0 synchro silent pumps in the sump and that FX6, there's a lot of, lot of oxygen in this tank. Love the look of this trout. That's today's lap of the fish room. Hope you enjoyed that. Let's get back to the uh, live stream. If you're watching this during the live stream and if you're watching it as a standalone video, please be sure to uh, comment and uh, hit that thumbs up and subscribe and then hit the bell, all that good stuff. And apparently when there's more comments, that's when YouTube gets excited about a video. So be sure to comment under the video. Let me know what you think, any suggestions, what do you think I should put into those quarantine tanks and add to my main tanks? I'm always listening to what you have to say and I appreciate your input. If you'd like to support the channel uh, further, consider becoming a member of the Garage Gang and that really helps. It's a monthly uh, way to uh, support the channel for as little as $3 a month. Uh, check it out. I'll, uh, I'll include details in the description below the video. All right, my friends, thank you for tuning in and that's it for me. Bye-bye. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. <clears throat> and, you know, it's funny. I film these things, and then I, I watch them, or while I'm editing, that, edit, editing the video, I'll spot something. Like, oh, what's going on with that fish? Or I really need to, to change that in the decor or something. So, it's, uh, so I'm getting something out of it as well as you. <laughs> and I hope you liked it. Somebody asked about the filtration in the beta tank. It is a Shisei um, Micron. They have a Nano that's even smaller, but this is called a Micron. I've got two of these compact internal filters. I happened to pick these up. I believe I got them from, um, I think I picked them up from KG Tropicals, I believe. And uh, good little filters, very simple easy to clean and i just love that they don't create a tremendous amount of circulation which bettas of course don't like and uh and they don't break up the surface even even a even a, a small sponge is going to create uh a bit more sur surface agitation uh than i would like which could potentially disrupt the uh, making of bubble nests which is what the, uh bettas love to do and uh <clears throat> so I use that, that type of filter. Is two of them in a 29 a little bit of an overkill? Maybe, but uh, you can adjust them. They have three settings. You can put them on low, and there's a very small amount of water, uh, uh, water movement. And because I have the tank divided for obvious reasons, uh, you know, I wanted movement and circulation on both sides of the aquarium. So... <clears throat> All right, so let's talk a little bit about um, about today's stated topic, even though we do wander around a little bit, but today's actual topic, just to, just to come through for you on, the, uh, on what that uh, thumbnail was promising to you. Uh, the topic that I, and I'm, and I'm taking notes, and I'll tell you why I've got a lot of notes on this topic, because I'm actually going to turn it into a standalone video with its own what you call B-roll. B-roll is, is just separate footage that you record that you can then uh, you know, superimpose and show during the video. So this is going to ultimately end up being a standalone video. But for now, uh, I'll just share with you what, what have been the biggest takeaways and and the biggest uh learning for me for me on the uh on this uh sort of transition this sort of uh very very uh, sort of different world of the planted the planted uh community tank versus the you know keeping big predator beasts in a very large aquarium uh, i mean naturally there are some 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 similarities i mean you want you want good water quality. You don't. You know. You you want uh, you want clean water. You want. I mean, there there there. You know. You want you want water turnover. There there are things that are of course universal, and uh, but uh, it, it they 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 part they part ways very 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 quickly, in uh, in in similarities. But uh, one difference that uh, I had to immediately adjust 
adjust to was how I think about lighting. With the African cichlids, the, the lighting situation is, is very different. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the, uh, the only time you really see this tank this lit behind me is, is, when, uh, is when I'm filming. Normally the tank only has one light strip, the one in the very front on, uh, the, the two in the back are off, and the one in the front is, is, is down to about 30%. It's controlled with an app, it's an RGB app controlled light, and, uh, and I keep it, I run it at about 30%. And so I also run it on a timer, uh, you know, as part of the app, it, it, it's not on for that long. It's on for several hours in the morning and several hours at night. Now, the reason I do that with, with large, you know, with, with African cichlids, with predators, is because it's, it seems, it seems that they calm down when things are a little bit dim. And so it kind of keeps them kind of mellow. Uh, you know, they, they kind of sleep and hibernate or do their thing, right? And uh, now, that's not to say that there isn't aggression in the dark and I have lost cichlids because of a uh, you know, ambush in the dark that occurred. As a matter of fact, that, that Taiwan reef that is now in, that, in the 55 gallon, I've moved it to the 55 gallon, is, was probably uh, assaulted in the dark because when, the, when there is light and when I'm around, possibly because they're distracted by my presence and think there's gonna be food, but when I'm around, nobody was picking on that fish. So it may have been an in-the-dark ambush that, that, that got them. But uh, the lighting is very limited. On the other hand, with the planted community tank, lighting is, a, is something that it, you dial in to the point where you know the plants are getting enough light, but, but there isn't so much light that you're getting algae on the glass, on the plants, on the wood, on the rocks. So you're, 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 you're monitoring, you're, you're moving the light around, you're playing with the intensity. And I would say that the planted aquarium has the lights on at about 70% for about twice the amount of time that the African cichlid tank has. And it's, it's still being tweaked. It's still being tweaked. Uh, mostly in an effort to control both black algae and the, and the hard green algae that can grow on the glass. So it's a little bit better now. I've dialed it back a bit. I've lowered the intensity a little bit. And, uh, and it looks like the black algae has, 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 uh, is starting to kind of roll back a little bit. The plecos are, are getting up on it and munching it a little bit, I've noticed. So... Lighting a planted community, it, it's, there's a lot more to it than just lighting a cichlid tank and deciding, okay, I want it lit two hours in the morning and, and four hours at night, and that's it. It's over. Whereas with the planted tank, there's a, an ongoing tweak that's going on and a close monitoring of the plants and the glass and the algae until you get it right. And, of course, I mean, I, I like full-spectrum lights in general. I think the, the best way to see the, the beauty of our fish is, is with sunlight. And the closest thing to that is a full-spectrum light. So I usually use full-spectrum on all my tanks. But uh, certainly in a planted tank, you must have a full-spectrum. You have to have sunlight conditions, plant-type conditions, which is why I have the um, aquarium co-op, that easy... LED light from Aquarium Co-op on the 55, the only tank that has a plant-specific light on it. So lighting, um, lighting and thinking, the way you think about light, is very, very different. And of course, there's also the idea of decor. Uh, with a planted community tank, you have to have something that is going to be conducive to, to plants. 
This is why I added the, the special uh, plant substrate on the outsides of the 55 gallon so I could put the root rooted plants into that section of the tank and then the long strips of driftwood to support plants that can be out of the substrate like your java fern and your anubias. So again, the, the, the considerations about substrate are, are going to be very, very different from the considerations of or thoughts about substrate in a cyclic tank. A cyclic tank, what do you want? They sift a lot. So you want something that is more like sand, not super fine because you might get stuff pulled up into your filters, but you know, fine enough so they can pick it up and spit it out and, uh, and not really uh, agitate their, 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 their gills or their lips. Uh, so, and if you're like me, uh, you want to help with buffering and with mineralization of the water by adding things like aragonite and crushed coral in an African cichlid tank. Whereas, you know, planted community tank is really just a uh, plant-friendly substrate and white sand, what is called, uh, uh, I think it's called Carib, Carib, Carib Sea Naturals. I think it's called Naturals, white sand. So substrate, very, very different thought process. Whereas with an African cichlid tank, it's helping with, with, uh, with buffering. It is part of your of your water chemistry, whereas in the planted tank, you really have a neutral, a neutral substrate. And that is, is going to be helping. If it helps anything, it helps in the area of plants. Now, that being said, you, you probably would not hurt things if you threw a handful of, of crushed coral in your planted community tank because calcium and magnesium never hurts. Especially, especially if you have snails or shrimp or anything that is, that is you know, creating a shell type of situation. Uh, other things that, that, that jump out in the differences is really water, you know, how you treat your water. Naturally, in both cases, you, you want to neutralize uh, chloramine, uh, you know, things of that nature. You, you, you certainly want zero ammonia, zero nitrite in both situations. And, but with, with, the, with the Malawis, I use uh, the Malawi lake salt. I add trace minerals. And I have found that, that both in the area of health and color, it really does tend to help, I think. Now, you might think I'm throwing money down the toilet, but I've always done it. I've always had fish that that people would comment and go, wow, is, how does that fish look like he's in breeding dress? You have no, no females in that tank. I, th I think a lot of it is just having water that is, that is providing the fish with a, a wide assortment of minerals. They get some minerals from their food, but a lot of the minerals are taken in through the body of the fish. And again, a handful of, of crushed coral in, the, in a planted community is not going not gonna to hurt at all. But um, also, of course, in the planted community, I'm adding fertilizers like your Easy Green, right? Your Easy Green uh, pump, and I've got root tabs in there. If I put root tabs in an African cichlid tank, uh, they would be dug up and swallowed within probably uh, 30 seconds. So <laughs> I'd have choking cichlids, but you don't need it, of course, because all I have in here are phony Fake, fake plants. As a piece of decor. Angelo comes in with a super chat. Thank you, Angelo. I appreciate that, my friend. I just happened to look over at the chat and got hit with it. Hey, Angelo, if you would like a uh, one of the new cichlids and coffee if, did I send one to you already? I might have sent one to you already. But I have a new holographic Cichlids and Coffee sticker. If you like it, send me your address. And, uh, you know, we'll do the same thing we did last week. We'll, any, anybody, with a, uh, anybody with a super chat, right around 10 bucks, we'll go ahead and give them a, uh, 
we'll give him a a sticker. And if you want some of the food, Angelo, if you want some Sarah food, let me know. I'll put a couple packets of Sarah in there too. All right? So uh, let's carry on. So let's talk a little bit about water, uh, about the uh, maintenance of the aquarium. In my mind, the, the taking care of a large aquarium is actually very easy especially if you have a sump and if you have a pre-filter on a canister like I have. I touch my filters, the sump, maybe once a year and every nine months on the canister. The sump has what are called filter socks. A filter sock works as a pre-filter and the FX6 has a sponge, again from Aquarium Co-op, over the intake that serves as a pre-filter and I've tested it, I've opened up the canister several times and it takes about nine months. So what do I do with this, with this tank? I, 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 I do a very light raking of the substrate, very light substrate raking every other week, every two or three weeks I maybe turn the rocks, maybe rinse out the, the pre-filter I swap out socks, maybe once every seven to nine days, I swap out the uh, pre-filter sock, and I do a water change, maybe 20, 30% water change. That's the extent of ongoing maintenance on the big 300 gallon behind me. The 55 gallon, I do water changes, but I've got to do a, uh, usually up until now, and I hope it, it gets better, but I have to do a razor blade scrape to get the hard green algae off of the glass. I have to trim and clean off plant surfaces that are showing too much algae. And maybe rub a little bit of the algae off of the rocks. Even though the rocks in that 55 are getting green algae, I don't mind green algae. I don't mind the look of it. I might just let it go. Uh, I've got to clean up any plants that are floating. I have to uh, clean up and trim the Sprite. And, and, of course, I have to work on the hang-on back filter that's in there. And that's a Marineland 400. And I just simply rinse some of the sponges. I have reusable sponges in the Marineland uh, hang-on back that I simply pull out, rinse under tap water, and put back in. So... All things considered, it is a longer process only because of the sheer volume of the water, a longer process to service the 300, but a much faster, a much easier process than servicing the planted 55-gallon community tank. Davey Larson comes in with a super chat. Hey, buddy, definitely let me know if you, if you uh, want that holographic sticker and some samples of Sarah, send your, uh, I might have it on file, but I don't really keep it usually, uh, send your full address to ben.o.cichlid, ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com. All right. So, maintenance. Now, Let's talk about, real quickly, let's, talk, let's touch, on, touch on feeding. Uh, with, with the planted cichlid tank, I'm sorry, with the planted community tank, boy, I'd love to see a planted cichlid tank. I tried it once, it cost me a lot of money, it didn't work. With the planted community tank, I've got a variety of things going on. I put some crushed, crushed community, uh, some of the community uh, crave from um, Extreme, I crush up a little bit of that. I drop some, I think they're Aquion shrimp pellets so that my bottom feeders, the uh, Cory's, uh, the, the Plecos, the, the, the Whiptail, even though the other fish pick them up and run around with them, but I drop some of those in there. I drop some algae wafers in there. So, and occasionally I'll give them some bloodworms, you know, on, 
and, and sometimes some live brine shrimp. So the feeding is a, a little bit more complicated. And while we're talking about nutrition, I also, when I do a water change, put a pump or two of Easy Green, some of that Easy Green fertilizer from the aquarium co-op. Now, feeding of the, of, of the African cichlids, I have a, a mix of food that includes uh, hikari and uh, dinachi and extreme pellets and uh, Pisces energetics. Sometimes there's a little north fin in there. There's a lot of, a, a, just a big mix that I make. And uh, there's also some uh, granu green, granu green from Sarah. They get a little bit of veggie in there to kind of keep the intestines cleared out. And I throw them in there. And they eat like pigs. I mean, uh, I, I feed them a lot. But it's gone in 15 seconds, maybe 30. All gone. And it's a lot of food. Very expensive. It's all high-end food. And they go through a lot of it. Whereas the planted tanks don't quite go through so much. A pinch goes a long way with these guys. Uh, the main concern is that everybody gets a chance to eat, like your neons stay near the bottom. Uh, the Buenos Aires Tetras are very aggressive eaters. The Rasboras, the Red Serpas, the Runny Noses, very sort of shy eaters. You just got to make sure some stuff is sinking or else every, everybody's gotta, not going to get to it. The same thing with the African cichlids. You've got to feed them on different sides of the tank. As I mentioned one time in a YouTube short, you've got to hit far ends of the tank while you're feeding or else the less dominant fish are not going to get to the food. So I'll feed way on one side, let all the fish migrate over there, and then I'll feed on the other side. And the less dominant fish have learned to hang back and because they know some fish is coming to the, some food is coming to that side. So uh, now, in the area of cost, I also feed uh, frozen krill to the large African cichlids. And frozen krill is expensive. I mean, a, cu a couple sheets about this big, you know, about a quarter inch thick, a sheet of it, smaller than a piece of uh, paper, is going to cost you about $22, $22, $23. So it is not cheap. So in some ways, the, uh, the predator tanks are easier uh, in several respects. Now let's talk about the enjoyment level. And this is a whole different, a different topic because you know, I, I enjoy them both for, for different reasons. I, I love the interaction of the larger fish going after your finger, splashing you when they feed. I think it's hilarious. Uh, some people don't like it. Maybe they find it annoying. I think it's funny. Latching onto your finger. I mean, as long as they don't have well-developed teeth, that, it, it, it's, it's, for me, it's just a lot of fun feeding the fish and, and watching how brave they are in constantly going after you. I mean, there's no, there's no shyness here. The, if I do that to my planted tank, I mean, they, they practically give themselves concussions banging against the back, the back wall of the tank because they're, they're so skittish. Whereas the African cichlids are like, hey, man, what's, what's happening? What you got? You got something for me? They're kind of like my dogs, you know? It's like, hey, what's up, man? You know? And, uh, <laughs> and I like that. I like that a lot. Now, with that comes a certain level of aggression. My tank is, relatively speaking, and compared to some of the stuff I've been through in the past, and at least what they're showing me, they might have snuck one in on me with that, with that Taiwan reef. But I'm not seeing a tremendous amount of aggression. After a water change, the, the uh, living stone eye or the Malawi trout might get a little fired up. 
and corral the fish a little bit. But for the most part, but from time to time, there is aggression. And, and that can be annoying. Whereas if you want a complete sort of a Zen moment, you sit in front of the planted, the planted community tank. Everybody is just kind of cruising around. Beautiful greens, the beautiful wood, the color of wood, the, nat- the nature of it, the floating sprite, little snail goes cruising by. You know, it's very calming, very relaxing, and I understand and I get it why some folks have gone from aggressive fish to a planted community because it, it, it's, it's a different kind of enjoyment. What enjoyment, what do you find more enjoyable? The big, boisterous, uh, coming at you, uh, aggressive cichlids? Or do you like the peaceful sort of floating around and the amount of green and natural wood colors that you can get in a planted community? What do you find more satisfying? I'd, I'd love to hear it. What's more satisfying for you? So there's a, there's a level of enjoyment that's different for each one for different reasons. And, uh, and I like them uh, and enjoy the heck out of them. And sometimes I'll come into the fish room and I'll just point my chair at the planet tank. And sometimes I'll turn around and just watch the Africans or watch the South Americans and, uh, or roll my chair over and just check out the, the live bears, which are, they're just a hoot. They never stop. They're always moving. Uh, the males are just relentless. There's like Viagra in the food or something. And, uh, and all the fry. There's just tons of fry that somehow, uh, I guess I keep them well fed enough so that they don't eat all the fry. I think some have gotten eaten. Jerry says, go big or go home. <laughs> so any comments that you have, any comments that you have about this topic, I'd love to hear it. Comment, comment frequently and comment hard uh, because apparently, like I mentioned in that video, the, the new algorithm is, is recommending videos based on the interaction and comments. And so, uh, yeah, comment your brains out. And uh, be sure to give it a, a thumbs up and a like and all that other good stuff. And so let's go ahead and, and uh, end off on this topic. And let's go ahead and take up some of your questions. I'm going to pull up the chat here. Your questions and comments. Now, did I miss a super chat? For those of you not familiar, a super chat is a way of saying, hey, man, here's a little dough. It's also a way of super emphasizing one of your questions. If it comes with a highlighted super chat, it definitely gets my attention. Sometimes I miss them. I don't always see them, and I apologize for that. But All right, let's see. Glitter jig. I switched from cichlids to a community tank and was shocked at the aggression of swordtails and tetras. They also seemed brainless compared to the cichlids. I'm now back to cichlids and loving it. Very, very interesting. Yeah, I, I, I would have to agree that there is more, there's more of a sentient, <laughs> a bit more life, a bit more like a puppy dog in your bigger fish. And uh, maybe that has to do with brain size. Uh, I don't know. I'm not really positive. But uh, yes, there is more of, a, of a, uh, a thinking, a figuring out of things. I've trained cichlids to, uh, uh, like I used to have an eye biter in California. And he knew when it was time to eat that he would go to the back corner of the tank Everybody else would get pellets, and he'd get a little, a little piece of frozen krill because I was trying to fatten him up. So when I'd lift up the lid to feed the fish, all the fish would go to the front, and the eye biter would go to the back corner. That takes a little bit of prediction, extrapolation, training. 
I was very impressed by that. So uh, you might you might be onto something, glitter jig. Peas and haps agrees. Go big or go home. Aquarium domain. Why choose? That is why they have multi tank syndrome. And you know, aquarium domain. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. I'm I'm loving. I'm I'm loving this this planted setup. And I'm loving the big fish. So, you know, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Cichlid Kings throws a little, a little lettuce at the channel. Thank you there, my friend. Someone said once that uh, you can tell how important things are by how many nicknames they have. How many nicknames are there for money? Cheddar, lettuce, dough, green. What else? Benjamins? Greenbacks? Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Cichlid Kings. All right. Ex Kali Kev, I've always kept big, aggressive fish. Now I want Shelly's. Small, aggressive fish. What's what that say about me? I kill plastic plants. <laughs> now, I don't know how you kill plastic plants, but... Uh, I get it on the Shelleys. Dennis Riddell. Denny has uh, Shelleys, and he is absolutely in love with them. You don't need a super big tank. Uh, they're very good parents. They're, as a matter of fact, I'm seriously considering a little Shelly tank for my granddaughter that you saw in that video during the week where I took her over to the aquatic critter. So a Shelly might just be her tank. We'll see. So let's see. Gaza Ga Mare, 1876. It's just like one of my cichlids. He knows where to go to get his food, but the rest always rush. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you, you can select out one fish, and you can try it with any fish. Moolah. There you go, Jerry. Moolah. You can try it with any fish. Just move it over. Get one fish. Coax them over and start to drop like a special treat for that fish. And after a while, that fish will not go to where all the fish go. It'll go right to where you want them. And uh, it's kind of cool. Warren Venter, a 35, and it says Z-A-R. So that's a special kind of currency, Z-A-R 35. Have a great weekend, everyone. I'm having a battle with Blackbeard Algae. But the Siamese algae eaters do seem to be helping. There you go. There you go. And Warren, if you'd like a sticker, not sure where you are, but I can send a sticker pretty much anywhere in the world. When you start getting into food packs and stuff, it, it, it just gets crazy expensive. But I'll send you a sticker if you send me your complete mailing address. GP. Dude. Comes in with a super chat. Thank you, my friend. You are truly... For reasons known by you and I, a major benefactor of this channel, and you are greatly appreciated, my friend. DSGF, hi, Ben, let me see. I have a pint-sized, what, carton of general aquarium salt. You know, I, I don't, uh, DSGF, I don't add salt. I've never added salt unless I felt I was treating something. So, and I, and I do like a tablespoon per five gallons. I dissolve it in a cup and then add it to the aquarium. But um, I wouldn't add salt unless you're treating for something. That, that's, now, do some research. Take everything I say with a big grain of salt, pun intended, and, uh, you know, do some research on that. Country strong and free in the house. Hello, my friend. And hello, India. India in the house. Thank you for uh, showing up. Very appreciated. Warren, the South African ran. Thank you for that. The South African ran is called a Z-A-R. Thank you for that. South Africa, I've heard you have a beautiful country. Love to visit someday.
So, any more comments or questions, go ahead and shoot them at me now. I am looking at the chat, so now's a good time to hit me. And while you're thinking of some questions, let's, uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look here at the, uh, at the 90 gallon. And you can see the, the uh, four silver dollars that were put into the 90 gallon are doing very, very well. The red shoulder is hiding, but there's the electric blue Acara right in the front. That's a very big old electric blue Acara that I got from a friend here in Nashville. Just a big, beautiful fish. I thought about getting other electric blue Acaras to keep them company, but I don't know. Maybe just don't want to mess mess with success let's take a peek at the uh you're getting a double lap today here's the the 55 cichlid kings I've got your address, ad, address somewhere, but send it to me again, and I will send you that sticker, my friend. If you'd like some Sarah food packets, let me know in the email. I can send those to you as well. I love the little plecos working hard on the algae. Um. If you can see the uh, 210, I'll move that light. As you can see, the 210 is thriving. That vieja continues to grow like a beast. Oscars continue to hang out like a BFF. The green tear is thriving. No fin or body damage. He does get chased around by the Salvini a little bit, but only to keep him out of the Salvini's corner of the world, which is where you see that cave on the left side. Let's see if the Nicaragua is going to get into it with the Firemouth. For some reason, the Jack Dempsey has changed positions. She was always by the back rock. And now she's hanging out near the front of the tank, which I like a lot more. Beautiful fish. Where's the Firemouth? How come he's not harassing the Nicaragua? I don't get it. So there you go. Have you thought of some questions? Now you can see that new rock I talked about in the video. See if you can make it out. This is the new rock. It's probably too, too bright right there. It's uh, just a, 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 a white with gray striped zebra rock. And I just think it's really pretty. Maybe I can come in on it. I just think it's a pretty rock where it has sentimental value since I picked it out with my granddaughter.
The rock that was there was moved over to the uh, 55 gallon where the Taiwan Reef is at. And so um, the little plecos love attaching to it. And they look really good because it's a lighter colored rock. And so they, they really like stand out attached to it. So very, very cool. All right, let's see. Any questions? I'm going to check the chat. We're pretty much over the hour already. Country strong and free, what tetra species should I add to my 120? I have red eyes, serpe, Mickey Mouse, platy, Cory cats, one bristle nose. Well, let me tell you, in my opinion, uh, country strong and free, one man's opinion, I, uh, I think that neons are, neon tetras are the most, one of the most underrated. They're just sort of taken for granted because they're so plentiful. But, uh, I have, I have 10 in the 55, and I love it when they school out from under the plants and move around the tank. Uh, they like being undercover. They like being in the plants. They like being under the wood. But when they come out, it's just like a, a flash of neon lights. Uh, so, yeah, consider something simple like uh, in a 125, I'd put 20, between 20 and 30 neon tetras. And, and you'll love when they school around. You'll just, you'll, you'll love it. I guarantee it. Um, you know, your black tetras, your, your, uh, your glow lights are nice. I love the look of, of rasboras when they're schooling together. So um, I think go with a big, big group of neons. Cardinals, cardinals are also very impressive. Uh, a little bit more expensive. I think neons are, 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 can be maybe a little bit, uh, from my experience, a little bit more hardy, but that would be my, my knee-jerk answer. Let's see here. Julian Di, Di Guara? Julia, Julian DiGuara, quick question. Can I do drip acclimation with shipped cichlids and I add Amgard Seachem to remove ammonia? Uh, Julian, I don't, I don't do drip acclimation. Uh, I, I used to. I had some troubles with, uh, I, I had some trouble with drip acclimation in the hardiness of the fish after being added to the aquarium. Since I started drop and flopping, uh, I've had no problem. Now, drop and flopping, if you're not familiar with it, that just means you temperature match, you, at, you float the bag, and then you just simply either reach in the bag and grab the fish, or you pour the fish through a net, and into the aquarium he goes. And it takes about 30 minutes between acclimation and cutting open the bag. The thinking behind it, and uh, is that when a fish has been in a bag for a while and fresh oxygen goes into the bag, you get an immediate rise in ammonia. And so you don't want that bag opened up and left, let sitting there. And, and I know I just saw a video uh, from a, cycl a, a, uh, a, a uh, discus, a discus fellow, who was doing drip acclimation and like it took an hour with like every 15 minutes or half hour dropping some water in from the tank, temperature matching by dropping in water, pH matching by dropping in the water. Now, maybe that's suggested with discus because of their pH sensitivity. And certainly if I buy discus from Watley or anywhere else, I'll ask about drip acclimation. But I've been very happy with the results I've gotten with, um, you know, with flop and what's called flop and drop. So, a glitter jig. Why are red spotted severum so hard to find? I haven't had any problem with them. 
I've, 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 uh, I've, I've, they're usually very available at the local fish store. I will say that once they get a certain size, uh, they become extremely, and maybe that's because they're not that available, but they become very expensive. Not discus expensive, but expensive. Uh, but I, I've, uh, I've found them to be pretty available locally. So I would look around. Check with your, uh, you know, with the folks on the Internet. You know, I mean, you, you're going to, maybe some, there are some providers that stock more of them. Uh, Julian, uh, you, you may want to follow the supplier's uh, instructions. And if something goes wrong, uh, you know, keep a video record of, of how you did it. And if something does go wrong with the fish and they don't last 48 hours, you can at least provide video evidence. Look, I, I acclimated the way you said, and I had a problem. Can you replace the fish? But uh, Jeff says that pearl gourmies are gems in a community tank. That's good to know. Pearl gourmies. How big do they get, Jeff? How big do the pearls get? And MNC does not like the regular neons. He likes the black neons. Very cool. Yeah, so Cichlid Kings is, is like, yeah, go with what your supplier says. And I would, I would follow the instructions of the supplier and then, but videotape it. You know, like with your phone, and if something goes wrong, you can say, hey, look, I, I did exactly what you said, and here's what happened. And um, I know when fish are in a bag for a very long time, you definitely do not want to do a drip acclimation, only because of the ammonia spike, but anyway. A glitter jig can't find any red spotted serums in Texas. Look around. Try the Cichlid Shack. Um, you've got lots of suppliers out there. Cichlid Shack, maybe Imperial, uh, maybe Ron's, maybe Dave's. Dave's Rare. Uh, there are a lot of suppliers out there that might have them in stock. But uh, certainly, try the Cichlid Shack first. <laughs> All right. Blue or honey gurumis are nice as well. I've thought about uh, uh, gurumis. Do you, uh, they, don't, they don't have an aggressive issue, do, you, do they? For some reason, I was thinking gurumis could be aggressive. Now, how are they with plants? Are gurumis okay with plants? Will they eat plants? Comment in the chat. Let me know. Jerry Martin says, check with consolidated fish farms. Green neons. Nice. Flip Aquatics, M&C, check with Flip Aquatics. I had a chance to meet Rob over at uh, Aquashella. Really nice guy. Real nice guy. All about fish, you know? And uh, just a real, uh, real sweet guy. Let's see here. Thank you, Cichlid Kings, for supplying the Cichlid Shack link. All right, I hope I didn't miss any Super Chats. If you Super Chatted uh, 10 bucks or so, send me your, uh, and you would like a holographic sticker and some Sarah uh, if you're in the United States, or just the sticker if you're out of the United States, send me an email to ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com and uh, look for my upcoming review of the Aquarium Co-op air pump that is lithium uh, ba battery powered so that it'll continue to provide uh, surface tension breakup in the event of a power outage. Also look for a video on a detailed fish room cleaning video where I take you all the way from I take you from cleaning the, the uh, glass panels substrate maintenance water change all of it in one video I've got, like I mentioned maybe last week, I have an hour of content. I'm trying to edit it back to under 30 minutes because I've noticed videos longer than that, just, they just don't really, uh, uh, don't really drive. Maybe, maybe I'll break it up into segments 
I, I don't know. We'll see. So keep an eye out for that, too. I'll try and get it out to you as soon as I can. Thank you, everybody, for sitting in. Thank you to my wonderful moderators. Thank you to all of you who uh, came in, spent an hour with me, gave it a thumbs up, subscribed, hit the bell, and, uh, and joined the, uh, the Garage Gang and became Patreon supporters. And also a big shout out to those of you who have visited my Teespring store and bought a mug. I've been getting pictures from people sending me pictures of drinking out of one of the channel mugs. Thank you to all of you for doing that as well. Coffee tastes better when it's in a cichlids and coffee mug. That has been verified by independent fact checkers. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I'll see you again soon. And uh, I'll see you this coming, this coming Saturday. Watch for new videos. You are the best. And that's it for now. Bye-bye.